Yeah, so unconscious bias is a huge subject. It's somewhat intangible, so I'll let you know um, how I got to now. In 2015, I made a film, I directed and produced a film along with a great team of people called Code Debugging the Gender Gap about the lack of women and people of color in tech. And initially I thought, okay, this is a subject that's gonna speak to Silicon Valley, Silicon Alley, maybe Silicon Swamp. And over the last 20 months, what's happened with the film has been completely humbling. The film has um, gone to the White House, it screened the White House executive offices. It's part of the US Department of State's um, film showcase, so we've gone to seven embassies and I'm on my way to Cambodia and Estonia. Um, the film has screened in over 52 countries, and I thought, this is crazy. Some of the companies that are screening the film and hiring me to come in and talk about um, what's going on with the lack of diversity and the importance of diversity aren't just tech companies. I've been to Microsoft, I've been to Google, I'm going to Yahoo on Thursday, but it's companies like Hydric and Struggles. It's companies like, this is my personal favorite, Auto Trader UK. So I thought, what is going on here? This is crazy. It's a very narrow subject, a very specific film, but what I learned is that we touched upon subjects that people of color and women face across industries, not just in tech. And the more I realized this, I thought, wait, there's a bigger story here. People are bringing me in to talk, to, it sort of as a, as a content for their unconscious bias training. And I thought, well, that's cool. Let's make a film about unconscious bias. Yeah, how do you make a film about unconscious bias? So talk about experience and user experience. How do I get the audience to understand that, guess what, you have a brain, you're biased. It means I am, it means you are, we all are. In many ways that protects us, it's there for a reason, and in a lot of ways it inhibits us. So how does unconscious bias specifically affect the way that we hire, the way that, the way that we promote or pay equally, and the way that we fund? So my job then as director is to make a film that disarms the audience, that gets them to have an experience of understanding that they too are biased and have unconscious biases that they're not aware of, obviously. But you have the inability to actually recognize your own unconscious biases, just like you can't do two math programs at once in your mind. In your so I'm going to show you the sizzle reel. This is... Um, something that we put together just to help with marketing of the film, to help with fundraising for the film. Um, we're diving deeper into a lot of subjects right now, but I'm happy to share this with you. Thanks. human, you have bias. Just like we breathe, we have bias. It's part of who we are. When it becomes completely unconscious, we have no idea how it's affecting our behavior. I see you, I make a quick judgment about you as a person, depending on my stereotypes about what somebody like you in your role should look like or could look like. We want to create a playing field that is level for everyone. The challenge is we tend to think about our own behavior as somehow more fair and free of bias than it is. Good morning. Well, a new study shows people don't take hurricanes as seriously if they have a female name. And the consequences of underestimating them can be deadly. I talked to a lot of voters who said, yes, I feel comfortable voting for a woman, but just not Hillary Clinton. She's too shrill, she's too loud. All of the signifiers are connected to the way that researchers look at gender bias and discrimination. My experience may be similar to a lot of women in technologies and maybe in the workplace in general, which is like, I feel like I was pretty clueless about a lot of the gender issues in my 20s. And it wasn't until my 30s that I think I started to realize like, wow, there is actually a lot more bias than I thought. It's not an even playing field. I, I would like to know why the last associate producer before me made $50 a week more than I do. Oh, because he was a man. <laughs>
without stereotyping what men and women think, oftentimes men will make a decision for a woman without even asking the woman. For instance, if there's a new opportunity for a promotion, it might require longer hours or travel, and they just assume, well, she wouldn't want that position because she just had a baby, or she's got two young kids, or her husband has a big job and travels. We have news tonight about women in the workplace. The hard fact is that women run only 4% of companies in the Fortune 500, and a new study shows almost twice as many women as men say they've been turned down for a job because of their sex. It is hard to break out as a woman. It is very hard. But there's so much about bias that's self-perpetuating. And we do it to ourselves. People do it to us, and we take false signals of I'm not good enough or whatever, and then bias becomes a label. And that's, that, doesn't, that doesn't give us a solution. There are, are two good reasons for anyone to try to figure out how to make more women or racial minorities or other groups that traditionally have had less success uh, more successful. And that's one is it's just the right thing to do, and two is you can make more money. I think those are both valid. We have study after study after study documenting that diverse teams are more productive, are more creative, that companies that have higher rates of gender diversity, 15% financially outperform others, but that more than doubles to 35% financial outperformance when you add racial and ethnic diversity. Whether it's an investment decision or a business decision you're making within your corporation, you have to believe that a diverse set of opinions or knowledge base around the world gives you a better world perspective, gives you access even to a bigger audience. It's very tempting for all of us to want to work with people who are just like us and who we'd be comfortable hanging out with and would want to have a beer with. But what that means is I'm creating a cocoon of yes around me. But if I can think a little bit further and say, instead of hiring someone for a culture fit, I want to hire them for a culture contribution. And that culture contribution might be greatest if they are different from me. So let's give a round of applause clearly to Robin.